Today's special guest was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. He just finished up his senior year at Missouri Valley College, where he spent the last five years playing basketball for them um, in Marshall, Missouri, near Kansas City. For people that don't know, it's kind of the middle of nowhere. Um, (laughs) Him and I were past teammates uh, for one year long ago. It feels like ages ago. Yeah, definitely Um, ages. And we're also going to ignore the fact that he's a uh, Chiefs fan, being from Kansas City. We are not Chiefs fans here. So we're gonna I'm ignore gonna that. that. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> show, Kevion Long. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate y'all guys letting me, you know, be on you guys' show. You know, us going back a uh, huge past. You know, it, like it's been a long time, but yeah, bro. Uh, I like being on. I love your guys' show, man. I really love watching you guys, and I'm just happy to be here. Appreciate it, bro. So yeah, yeah I guess thanks. we got we we got to get it started at the beginning. Being from Kansas City. Um, tell us a little bit about your childhood, your upbringing, a little bit about your family life. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, being from Kansas city, uh, Kansas city isn't, uh, let me see, how do I, how can I put this? It isn't really one of the, the, the biggest cities, but like, you know, I guess we get a little bit of spotlight. Um, we're definitely one of the, you know, last place type of cities, um, People really don't – it isn't a number one spot for vacation. It isn't a number one spot for, you know, really much of anything, really. So I definitely feel like I'm an underdog, you know, being from there. Um, I think feel like a lot of kids that are from there, you know, feel like that. Um, but uh, I love growing up there. Um, I love being there. Um, I love my city. Uh, and, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was rough, but uh, I managed and, you know, I, once I got the chance to get out a little bit, I was kind of happy with it. You know, once I got away for a little bit, that's why, you know, I didn't I didn't mind being in Marshall for, you know, five years. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like this is more of my home now than Kansas City, you know, was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I definitely – it definitely was a, a different um, adventure coming from there. Um, it isn't obviously a small city, um, but it isn't a big city either. And I, I like it. I love it, actually. Yeah, we um I, I'm really I'm really impressed that you yeah. stuck it out there at Missouri Valley because I spent one year there and I'm from a See? small town anyway. And when I got there, yep. I was like, there's all we had was what a KFC and a Walmart. That's yes, that's bro. literally it. Yes. Bro. I don't I don't know yes. how you did it. How did you manage it's, to do that? Bro, bro, it really took a lot of discipline. Um I definitely I definitely like there was multiple times, you know what I mean, throughout like you know my years of being here, where I was like, bro, fuck it, like like I don't want to be here, like I want, I'm ready to go, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, so there was definitely a lot of times where I was I was contemplating, and I was like, bro, I want to leave, but I knew honestly I wasn't the player I, I wanted to be yet, you know what I mean? So I, I just stuck it out for more for the beneficial to become better, you know what I mean? Then like beneficial of like leaving and like trying to go somewhere else and not being ready you know what I mean mm-hmm. so that that was the, the huge factor for me that's the only reason why I wanted to stay and I just love the competitiveness you know that was here we got so many kids here bro and you know how it is like they bring in yeah. so many kids like every year it's crazy um and you got to compete you know what I mean you got to bring it every year you know what I mean for your spot so I just love that factor of it and I feel like it made me you know what I mean to the player that I am now if that makes sense Mm-hmm. Oh, obviously it's it's paid off because I remember, again, this is this is forever ago. But I remember when you came yeah. in. I remember you kind of being like a raw prospect. You kind of yes. wiry, See? and then now you now you've yeah. kind of grown into your frame a little bit. You've obviously developed yes, into bro. a heck of a heck of a ball player. So um, yes, but yeah, I was definitely like the the scrawniest of the bunch. Just like you said, straight raw, <laughs> like it's straight natural. I mean, I think that's kind of like the that's what I mean by like KC, bro. It's like. It, it's like it's an affecting KC like in the inner city in Kansas City bro like where I came from we barely lifted weights you know what I mean like there wasn't any lifting for basketball season it was like you're just going to hoop you know what I mean like that was it like like playing basketball was like a side job for Kansas City you know what I mean yeah, and yeah. so that's kind of how it was and then like when I went to a, a another school like in a suburb I went to Ruskin uh in the suburb of KC 
it was like a whole nother um like team i feel like i was like playing in college like i was in an actual program you know what i mean they had mm-hmm. spring season like lifting and and you know what i mean and like conditioning we were running outside but when i went to my other school um and when i went to the inner city school like it wasn't you know what i mean it wasn't nearly as hard nearly as rough you know what i mean so I was definitely grateful to be able to go there because then it prepared me for Missouri Valley a little bit, but I still wasn't in for anything. You know what I mean? I still didn't really gain as much weight and I still really wasn't ready. So I definitely like that. I was able to finally stick it out here and figure it out. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, bro. That's awesome. I, def- I definitely applaud you for that. I'm going to let Zach hop in here. Cause he- he's here too. <laughs> yeah. For so sure. um, my first question for you is uh, who are some of your role models that have helped you get to where you are today? Oh, role models. <laughs> that's, a, that's rough. That's a big one. I'd say role models, somebody who I looked up to. I'd definitely say, like, if if it was me, I'd say my uncle. Um, He was one of my biggest role models. He's kind of like my big brother, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, He's not that much older. He's 35, you know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. he's not that much older than me. You know, we can kick it, have a couple of drinks together, that type of stuff. And it is just, it's just super fun. But yeah, he was my biggest role model. Um, he got shot uh not too long ago in both his legs and he bounced back like it wasn't nothing. You know what I mean? So he was my biggest role model. Yeah, like definitely. So, you know, I look up to that dude and um yeah, seeing him bounce back from that and then like stand strong for our whole family, because you know, he's like the man of the household, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. him staying strong for our whole family and bouncing back from that was like, all right, if you can do that, bro, I can go do five years in college. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I applaud that, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think him. And then, you know, like, if I was to say role model, like, basketball-wise, um, I have um, an older cousin. Um, he definitely was so – he was so talented, bro, at basketball. And I don't know why he put down the ball, but uh, he's my older cousin. And I, I definitely, like – he's one of the – probably my second biggest, like, impacts on me basketball-wise because he picked up the ball first. And then, like, me being around him so much, it kind of just gravitated towards me. He's older than me yeah. by, like, six or seven years. And, like, I used to just come home from school, and he'd already be there, be out of school, because he was in high school, and I was in, like, middle school at the time. And I used to just go at him every day. You know what I mean? One-on-one. <laughs> go at him every day, man. And he would beat me, because he had a nice jumper, nice mid-range, and he was just so quick. And he would beat me every day. And it would be some days I would cry, bro. Like, I, I really would. <laughs> like, because I'm that competitive, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh-huh. I definitely I definitely would 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 be so mad and so frustrated. But I'm happy that he pushed me, you know what I mean, in basketball. And then, like, even now, I still kind of talk to him, you know what I mean? Even, he, You know, he's just my cousin, but, like, I still kind of talk to him, you know what I mean, when I need to really vent to somebody and talk to. He definitely shows me different sides of things. So I, I definitely mm-hmm. appreciate him. So did you have siblings growing up or were these the uncle and the cousin really who you hung around? Yeah, they were really who I hung around, but I, I got two, I have two other brothers too. Um, I have a brother that's 24 and I have a brother that's 27. They just turned 27. Um, oh, okay. So, so them two guys, like I definitely love those two guys and, and they definitely, you know, helped shape me too. I think I have a little bit of both of them, you know, kind of in me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Since I'm like the, the younger one. Um, But they just, you know what I mean? Their their path wasn't basketball, but they just told me to stick with it pretty much. And then my cousin, him just playing basketball was just like, you know what I mean? I seen him and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I got to pick up a ball, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. his favorite player, like like at the time, I don't know if you guys remember, like like 2011, like Derrick Rose, his favorite player mm-hmm. was Derrick Rose. So like he loved like trying to play like D Rose, like, and he was just so shifty with the ball, bro. Mid range mm-hmm. game was crazy. So like I just I don't know, bro. I just love that type of play, you know. How how old were you when when basketball became like a thing that you thought it could be a serious thing for you to accomplish and you could play at a high level? Um, so I didn't I didn't start playing until my my freshman year of high school. So I was late. Wow. Oh late bloomer so when i tell you this is why like people don't understand why i take this like like why i take it so serious and like why i take the game so hard like obviously like there's so many athletes that become burnt out you know what i mean that are like Mm -hmm. okay i don't want to do this no more like i'm done with it because they've been doing it since they were in you know middle school you know elementary school you know what i mean me Mm -hmm. i was so late to the game like i didn't play my first basketball game until i was a freshman in high school you know what i mean Wow. so i was so late to it 
but I kind of also was a natural. Like I said, I had a cousin who I went against every, you know, every day pretty much. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like a natural to it. And then once I really got involved in the game and I played my freshman year, I made the AAU team. Like mm-hmm. my my coach of my varsity team was my head was our AAU head coach. You know what I mean? So he just took me under his wing and was like, hey, I want you to get better. Like come play for my AAU team and we'll just develop you from there. And so I just started playing from there. And like you said, I was a raw talent. So I just used to shoot the ball a lot, like crazy. <laughs> and I used to be a just straight catch and shoot shooter. You know what I mean? Because that's like uh-huh. the first thing you kind of learn. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you're taking like baby steps. Um, so yeah, I was late to everybody. Everybody on AAU, like they were freshmen. Like I went to Vegas my, um, I went to Las Vegas and I played in the tournament my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. And like I said, this was only my second year of playing basketball, like actual basketball. So when I went to Vegas, I had like 20, you know what I mean? Chris Paul was there. Carmelo was there. Like it was a huge tournament. You know what I mean? Like there were like, I think a hundred teams playing in this new tournament. So, you know, I was like, Hey, this is my chance to kind of like do something, you know what I mean? In this sport that like, I just got into, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I had teammates, you know what I mean? That play for park. Like I got a direct teammate that I played AAU with. He plays and starts at park right now, park Mm -hmm. university. So, he was like, you know, he started at like, you know, fifth grade and been playing AAU. He's six eight, you know what I mean? So yeah. he was a absolute freak, like monster, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I was trying to keep up with him, you know what I mean? I'm not six eight. So it's like, you know what I mean? As a guard, you're like, you don't, you don't, you know what I mean? You can't really catch up because there's only so much you can do to develop, especially when you're a late bloomer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, yeah. So I just was so late to the game and I think that was about around the time when I when it got serious with me was like my sophomore year, my freshman year. It was a struggle. I got yelled at a lot, for sure. I definitely, <laughs> my coach, my coach butchered me my freshman year. Like, like yelled at because I made so many mistakes. You know what I mean? Well, what, what you're talking what, about kind of like walked right into my next question is, uh, what is one part of your game that you pride yourself on the most? Because I was watching some of your highlight tapes before yeah. this. Your jumper's really nice. Yeah. Really good on defense. Can yeah. attack the rim. I yeah. was like, dang. Yeah. I, I I would say my jumper was like, I don't know. Like, so it got to a point where like uh, it's kind of crazy, but like and this was my my like my mindset because I'm so competitive. Like it got to a point where people like were disrespecting me. Like I used to, like I said, I used to just be a straight shooter and mm-hmm. people just kind of like didn't want to leave me open. You know what I mean? So I used to just catch and shoot all day, every day. But it got to a point where people started, like, disrespecting me and were like, okay, we don't think he can get to the room. You know what I mean? And this is when things started to get serious because my sophomore year, I started to actually be a problem, you know what I mean, for teams. And they're like, okay, he's he's going to knock down, like, you know what I mean, four or five yeah, threes a game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they, it started to be a problem. We're like, okay, if I knock down four or five threes a game, how can we stop him from scoring? So we're going to face guard him now. Well, we don't think he can get to the room and make a play. You know what I mean? So – I started to learn, like, okay, I have to learn how to put the ball down, dribble, and be, you know what I mean, a threat, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. to the rim. So I kind of just really mashed that in. And like I said, I was really a raw talent then as well, you know what I mean? I didn't have any muscle then. And I tried my best to just kind of, you know, catch up as much as I could. I put in a lot of time in the gym, you know, working on ball handling and things like that. And then it kind of finally all just kind of started to mold a little bit better. And I started being able to get to the rim a little bit better. And then, like I said, I got to college and I was like, okay, I'm going to work on that even harder. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I, I feel like shooting is probably my number one thing. So I felt like, okay, my jumper is going to always be there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like my jumper is the number one thing for me. I can just really focus on, you know, my handle and getting to the rim and, you know, you know, making plays for other people. So I feel like that was one of my biggest things. Um, but shooting definitely is my probably my number one thing. Like I just, I I've always been a really really good shooter. Um, and I think if, if I probably would have just potent it a little bit more and worked on it more, like which I'm doing right now, I feel like I could be, you know what I mean, like lights out from perimeter. You know what I mean, yeah. like but like okay, you got to make sure you step up on me. You know what I mean. And I feel like that's what I'm trying to perfect right now. Like I said. Like just if players go under, I, I can knock down shots. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like my my limit for me right now is like a a Chris Paul or a, or a Steph. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
when you can execute as a point guard, you know what I mean, from the perimeter and knock down shots and also make plays, like, you got it all. You know what I mean? Trey Young, he's the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, definitely, I feel like shooting is probably my number one thing for real. You went to Missouri Valley, but what were the offers like coming out of high school? Was that, like, the main one that you, you focused on, or was there a lot? Uh, so, so that's the thing about me. So, like, like that's the, that's the thing about coming from Kansas City. Is like, it's so many misconceptions when you're in high school, bro. Like, everyone wants to go, like, D1 or better. You know what I mean? Like, D1 or better. Like, D1 and or that's it. You know what I mean? That's every kid in Kansas City is like that, and that's their mindset. They won't go and talk to a smaller school. You know what I mean? So that was a thing that was kind of like in my head, like pretty heavily. And I was pretty like, like, I'm not going to say I wasn't, I wasn't like heavily recruited, but I felt like I had a lot of like D2 offers and D2 interests. You know what I mean? Like I had a D2 interest from Arkansas Tech University. You know what I mean? Um, They coach, you know, he sent me like a, a long letter talking about how like he felt like I was one of the one of the best kids, you know, out of Missouri, because they were looking for, you know, players, you know, close to their state that they could recruit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they were, you know, really interested in me. And in my mind at the time, you know, I'm a senior out of high school. I'm like, man, I don't want to go to no more camps and let this dude see me play. You know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. a senior. Like, I want to offer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was my mindset. But I wish I would have took some of those things back and I wish I would have actually attended some of these camps. You know what I mean? Then I wouldn't have. But I don't regret landing at Missouri Valley. But like like Missouri Valley was one of the places where I was like, OK, I'm going to go to the camp and go work mm-hmm. out for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm definitely grateful. But it just shows you like, you know, my ability, like where like if I probably would have went to one of those camps, maybe one of the coaches would have, you know what I mean, reached out to me mm-hmm. even further and be like, hey, come play here. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I had another one of those. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Panhandle State University. It's in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. It's a D2. Uh, they coach kind of like did the same thing. He reached out to me um, and was like, come for a camp. And like I said, I was just hard headed. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Being from KC and not really mm-hmm. having much, you're like, I don't want to leave the state. You know what I mean? I don't want to go <laughs> all the way over here and go, yeah. you know, you know, work out for this coach right here. Like, I want this coach to send me. An envelope and it'd be an offer. You know what I mean? I want it to be mm-hmm. stamped and sealed. And I think that's a lot of kids' like you know impression today of being D one. You know, especially with social media and everything, man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody wants that offer really badly, and they just pinpoint it. But it's like even if you just get interest, bro, your foot's you know halfway in the door, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So well, that's a great point because NAIA talent. I played yes. one year with you. I played one year at Missouri Baptist. Yes. I think it's the most underrated talent yes. Yes. i mean people think d1 obviously and, and d2 yes. and d3 i i when i went to a camp uh mm-hmm. with the atlanta hawks uh developmental coach he said naia is very comparable to division two yeah but, i mean it's it's separate than ncaa so people don't yes. get that get right. that rep because of it exactly they don't give them they don't give nai players enough credit for for real and it definitely is comparable to d2 pretty much like d, them and d2 pretty much back match up hand in hand um and yeah bro i think that's just probably the only thing it's just a lot of players who don't end up d2 and don't end up in that perfect d2 fit you know what i mean because there's so many players out there where it's like coaches are like oh i don't think this person will fit in my program you know what i mean because that person may be a freak athlete and he wants you know what i mean a knockdown shooter to stretch the floor you know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that's just like that that goes into it, and they don't land at D2s, and then you land at a NAI. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the NAI doesn't get enough credit. Um, but, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, in the future, you know, people will start respecting NAIs more. Yeah. This next question here, Zach has uh, – there's only one right answer. I just want to let you know ahead of time. But go, yeah. go ahead, Zach. One right answer. <laughs> there's uh... – a one wrong answer no uh, um so kind of changing topics a little bit um what yeah. is your favorite nba team and nba player oh i favorite? guess i guess your player could be they could be playing now or past doesn't all right all right all right so i mean i'm, pre- I'm pretty sure AJ might know this i post this i probably post this guy a lot but Kyrie for sure is my favorite mm-hmm. player um, just cause, bro, he just can hit a shot from anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, he does some crazy stuff that yeah, it's just like yeah. how. <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking to my brother about this uh last night. I was like, bro, he's like a perfectionist, bro. 
Like, uh, his game is just so, you know, perfect. Like, he can knock down a midi, you know what I mean? He can knock down a three, and he can finish a layup. Like, it's mm-hmm. just the full packet of execute. And so I would say, I would say him, and then my favorite team, like, if I was going, like, all time, I'm going, like, Miami Heat, like, for sure. Like, 20, like 2011, 2012 Miami Heat. I'm a huge D-Wade fan, too. Sense. So, D-Wade probably is my favorite, my second favorite player. Uh, Kyrie's my first. I'm a huge, huge, huge D-Wade fan. Love his defense. Love his mid-range shot. Yeah. And so, I'd probably have to go with that team in Miami when he had LeBron, bro. <laughs> they were crazy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know what the only right answer was, right? What was the only right? I feel like I know. I feel like I, I see you post about it a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> who Who is that? Uh, I'm trying to think. Was it the Hawks? Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, for my player. Oh, for your player? Yeah. <sighs> Who's your favorite player? <laughs> I feel like I know who it is. It's Did present. you post about him like? 24 7 i post about him a lot like I if know, he was if he was a woman is. aj would propose immediately <laughs> really yeah I'm, i don't know who it is but i can't think of it i feel like i have seen you post this person a lot but i can't huh? think of who it is specifically it's braun bro braun I, I feel like i have seen you post a lot of lebron <laughs> what am i thinking i feel like everybody posts lebron though so it's hard to tell who's if like if mm-hmm. you're like a diehard braun fan or if it's just like He's that great. I feel like that's just yeah. with LeBron. You know what I mean? I know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well said. Yeah. Um. Have you reached the point? More on a serious note, again. Have you reached the point in your career where you're kind of pleased with where you're at? Um. I'm definitely. I don't. I don't feel like I'm pleased with where I'm at. Like I said, I. I feel like I started playing basketball so late, and I feel like. Yeah. I'm just now reaching my peak point of potential. Um. Like I like how I told you guys like. You know, I mean, you can compare and you can look up people like, you know, what I mean, small guards. You got Chris Paul, you got Trey Young, you got all these people, you know, it's Steph Curry, all them type of players where like, you know what I mean? They've perfected their jumpers. They have have master IQs as well. You know what I mean? And I feel like as I get older and I play that game and I play that style of play, I feel like I'm only going to get better at it. You know what I mean? So. The older I get, the more my IQ, you know what I mean, develops. And, you know what I mean, the more I work on my game, the more my jumper is going to develop and get more crazier. So, I'm honestly, I'm looking forward to this next season because I'm definitely going to play. Actually, one thing I want to mention before my last question is it's kind of just an observation that I thought was kind of funny. When I was looking at your highlight tape, there was one game that you guys were playing where you guys were wearing orange jerseys and mm-hmm. the opposing team was wearing red jerseys. And I yeah. was – how did they let that happen? Because I was I, – I don't really know. I mean, it's just kind of like one of those things where I guess they just were like, oh, okay. We didn't – I mean, I feel like coaches don't really communicate, you know what I mean, yeah. back and forth. Um, especially not with jerseys. They just kind of like bring them and just go with the flow type of thing. So I think that's the right – I've seen that too. It looked kind of off and kind of weird. <laughs> Even when I watched the highlights, I was like, uh, I don't know about this. Like they may maybe they they might get my team mixed up, you know what I mean? Like, hey, is he on orange or is he on red? You know what I mean? Maybe you're the one getting cooked. (laughs) Exactly. So I was like, hey, you know, I need to make sure I kind of focus in on where I'm at right now. (laughs) But yeah, I don't know. They just, I don't know. They pretty much just kind of let that fly and let us play. Um, Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, (laughs) it's like me playing uh like 2K and like changing the jerseys around to some something cool then the other team has like the same color and i'm like i have no idea exactly. who I'm, who's on my yep. team <laughs> yeah exactly i think we didn't even notice it until after a game we were like yeah. oh this looks too close to the same color <laughs> that is funny mm-hmm. all right so my last question for sure is um what has been your favorite memory from your basketball career so far oh favorite memory that's a big one i'm not gonna lie yeah. my favorite memory was probably really recent um oh there's so many though i don't <laughs> all right i think i think i would say favorite memory from my basketball career has to be was recently um we went against graceland um i hit i think three threes back to back um and that that last three i hit put us up and we were losing by 30 oh wow and i saw I, that I, highlight I saw yes. that highlight. Yep. Yes. We were losing by 30 um, in the first half. We were playing pretty awful, pretty bad. 
and we were losing by 30. And my, I was so, I was kind of, you know how basketball is, it's kind of up down. So you just kind of got to keep your composure. I kind of got taken out at one point in time and I kind of was just kind of frustrated about it. And when I got back in the game, I just, you know, snapped into a whole nother mode. And I was like, you know what? I just got to do something about this. Like we can't lose by 30 right now. Like, and we're at home and I already don't like Graceland. You know how, like, we used to, AJ, we used to go to Graceland all the time and play. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of had a bad taste for Graceland. You know what I mean? So I just was like, okay, I got to do what I got to do. We're at home. We're playing Graceland. We played them there and lost to them by, like, five. And then we playing them here, and now we're losing by 30. So I was like, I got to do something. And, you know, I brung that energy. And, you know, I got a bunch of younger guys on my team. So – Whatever I do, they kind of just follow behind me a little bit, pretty much. So they felt my energy. They seen how I was coming, how I was playing pretty, like, like hard defense, being competitive, even though we were down 30. And we just so happened to, to rally together and come back from 30. And like I said, I hit three threes in a row. And literally the last three was to put us up. And, like, it was crazy. So I definitely – that was probably my biggest – we won the game. That was probably my biggest moment. Um – and probably my biggest memory, and and it was this year. So I was just so happy about that, mm -hmm. hitting that last three. You know what I mean? But it, it was fun. It definitely was fun. That's probably my biggest one. That's dope, That's bro. Awesome. That's amazing. Great way to go out. Um, yeah, for sure. From, from Missouri Valley, I guess. So yeah. we're going to finish up with, with five rapid questions here. First thing off the top of your head, no thinking about it. Just, just, just go with the flow. Um, are right. you a sneakerhead? And how many do you have? Yes. I have, I take 10 pairs, 10 pairs sneakers. Okay, right on, right on. Uh, what's your favorite hobby off the court? Favorite hobby off the court, I would say listening to music. Actually, I would okay. say editing. I would say editing. It's between okay. music and editing. I love editing videos and nice. stuff like that. Nice. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. Ooh, that's kind of hard, but I got to go big time. I got to go Beyonce. I'm shooting my shot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, what was your favorite childhood TV show? Favorite childhood TV show? Um, I would say regular show. I love I was a Cartoon Network mm. fan for sure. Gotcha. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, what's the worst fast food out there? What's the wait, wait, what did you say? What what's the worst fast food out there? Worst fast food, Arby's for sure. I'm not an oh, Arby's fan. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually have two more here that I wrote wrote down. Um do you have any tattoos, and what are they? Yep, um, I got one one on my arm, and one on my chest. The one on my chest was the first one I got my sophomore year, first tattoo ever. I got my mom's name. Um, she passed away when I was four, so I, I just you know I wanted that to be the first thing I ever got. And then my second one, um, I got um, uh, I got a tattoo on my arm of a basketball and some clouds, and I have a scripture, um, and it just says pretty much that um I can. You know what I mean? Do anything as long as I commit my work to the Lord. So um, I pretty much wanted to get, you know, two tattoos that, you know what I mean, of things that I really love. And I told myself I wouldn't get any more. So those are the last two. I'm done with it. <laughs> love it, bro. Love it. Uh, and the last one here, if you could have dinner with anyone dead or alive, who are you dining with? Dead or alive? Ooh, that's a rough one. Um, I would say alive. And I'm taking – I got to take one of my favorite players. I got to take Kyrie. I'm just dining with Kyrie. Because I feel like he would give me so much basketball info and so much – because he's a perfectionist. So, like, if I can get my game to be perfect and he can show me how, I'm de I'm dining with him for sure. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Kevion, we can't thank you enough for joining us today, man. Uh, hearing your story – uh, me, me personally catching up with you. I haven't talked to you like this. Man. I haven't seen you in person in like five years. So or yeah. I guess I saw you one time after a basketball game, actually. Yeah, you I, did, I, ca I caught up with you. Yeah. Yep. yep. But no, it was great seeing you, man. Uh, great having you on and best of luck uh, the rest of your career. And hopefully we'll be hearing about uh, the next school you're, you're attending here. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Zach. Appreciate yeah, you, thank AJ, you, man. Thank you guys for letting me be here, man. And yeah, bro, it was just so fun.